Today we're gonna to talk about building a video editing PC. Also just so happens that a good video editing PC is generally a good gaming PC. So two birds with one stone in this video, guys. But I think this might be the most helpful thing if you're looking to build a computer for filmmaking. And it's just a basic price breakdown. The price point stays the same and what you get for it just constantly goes up. About two years from now, each of those parts is probably gonna cost the same amount, it's just they're each gonna be way better. How much should you spend on your CPU? probably around $500. But once you start spending more than that, you're starting to hit diminishing returns. Spend another $50 to $100 on a cooling solution for that CPU, and you can then overclock the CPU and get $2,000 performance. How much do you spend on the motherboard? Probably around $300 to $400. You'll make sure you get high quality components and the right number of ports that you need. GPU, how much should you spend on a GPU? Try to spend about $500, maybe more. Once you start spending more than $1,000 on a GPU, once again, you're hitting the wall of diminishing returns. You can look into the Titans, which are more the workstation type graphics cards. And if you got the money and you're a working professional, certainly investigate it. Power supply, about 100 bucks or so. RAM, probably want to spend about $200 to $300 on RAM. That should get you about 32 gigabytes of nice, fast RAM. Finally, hard drives. Hard drives are always kind of a moving target. So I'll just say this. I would recommend buying two rather than one solid-state drive. Load it for speed! Go! And if you have your eyes, for example, on, on a 512 gigabyte solid-state drive, think about getting two 256s instead. You'll generally come in around the same price point, but you'll get twice as fast performance. Just footage storage hard drives. I mean, prices are always varying on those things. You know, spend about 150 bucks on one of those and you'll get four terabytes these days, and it'll usually be a quality hard drive. So, yeah. Wait, four terabytes, 150 bucks? Is that how much it is now? Man, that's so cheap. Oh, cases. Oh, get a good case. Get a really, really good case. Drop like the 100 to $200 it takes to get a really good case. Yeah. You will not regret it. It is one of the best things you can do for your computer. Good cases have a couple things going for them. They help have a bunch of like extra ports and all that stuff for both USB audio, things like that. Things you can plug into your motherboard and make it easier to use in general. You also get great features such as things like this. Hard drive base in the front, wow, so you can have hot swapping hard drives. If you look up here, there's a volume knob. <laughs> Wait, is there really a volume knob on the computer? <laughs> Seriously, what is this for? It's a volume knob, dude. It says FC on it. Yeah, for um, uh, phone control. <laughs> and you have FM for when you want to turn right. on the radio. <laughs> it's technically a joke. All right, all good. <laughs> if you don't have that in your budget, that's fine. Just start looking at those components we talked about and just keep stepping them down little by little. But keep in mind that your CPU has priority in terms of what you need to spend your money on, followed by your RAM. You need to have, make sure you have plenty of RAM and your GPU. Beyond that, it becomes less and less important what you have in your computer. Mm -hmm. So that covers the computer. Some other things to think about. Getting a nice monitor definitely helps. We tend to stick with 1080p monitors. Good color representation goes a long way. Get a nice keyboard, get a nice mouse, etc. But those are all components. At the end of the day, it's what's in here that matters, right? Yeah, it's what's in here that matters. matters. So there's a little overview of what to look for in a video editing PC versus a gaming PC, but let's get specific here. So here we have an Origin PC. This is one of our fastest computers in the office. Um, mm -hmm. Previously, we had these R2-D2s. Sweet R2-D2 computers <laughs> that we built uh, as part of Land party. Mode yeah. slash LAN party back in the day. Still run great, but this right now, this is the beast to beat. Let's take a look inside this box, talk about the components that you should look for if building your own video editing or possibly a gaming PC, multi-purpose, doesn't really matter. Let's Come take, take a, a part. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Oh. That doesn't tell me anything. How do you open this? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I thought there was supposed to be memory in here. How's it going there, buddy? Sam's the kid that All right. uh, his old neighbor would hire to take the viruses off a computer back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> I use a bottle of disinfectant. <laughs> Let's start from the top, CPUs. You basically have two choices these days, Intel and AMD. Generally speaking, you want to stick with Intel over AMD when it comes to processors for video editing rig. Intel processors tend to be a little bit faster and a little bit better integrated into things like Adobe Premiere. Now the thing is, if you're on a budget, you don't need to buy the top of the line CPU. A fast CPU definitely helps when it comes to video editing. We're smart, we saved our money, and we overclocked them to a higher speed rather than buying a higher speed CPU. Come here and you take a look at the computer. Here's where the processor sits. 
And here we have liquid cooling. You don't need a huge processor to run video games. However, when it comes to video editing, CPUs are exceptionally good for when you are actually rendering videos out and when you're actually uh, working in like a program like After Effects or a 3D program and you're basically trying to take these graphics you see on screen and render them into a file. That's generally where the CPU comes in most. Mm -hmm. The reason gaming PCs don't need so much RAM, you're mostly loading it in your graphics card, dummy. <laughs> Dingus. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the game elements don't actually take up that much memory. Uh, they're all made to usually be pretty lightweight because they need to go onto the memory of the GPU. Long story short, if you've ever seen a long, complicated video editing timeline with tons of clips and all this stuff and all these things in this huge timeline, super complicated looking, you find that it very quickly gets laggy. And if you have all these sequences and windows and stuff open, you are sucking up your RAM so, so fast. So that's why having a lot of RAM will help you with video editing. How much RAM is enough RAM? Answer, 32 gigabytes. Let's talk about the next big thing that I really like to talk about, GPUs. GPUs, what are they? Graphics processor unit, maybe. <laughs> Look at this, there's a GPU in here. This is an NVIDIA GeForce Titan Black. What can I say other than it's the most expensive GPU you can get? <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, so if you guys are looking for a GPU for your film computer, once again, we recommend doing NVIDIA over AMD. Let's just say we have one computer with an AMD processor and graphics card, and it's the one that everyone hates to use. Now, NVIDIA has CUDA, which is a little bit better, a little bit faster, and a little bit more supported than OpenGL. What's CUDA? CUDA is basically a programming language that GPUs can decode. Normal programming language needs to run on the CPU, but you have this basically a whole nother computer sitting inside your computer, known as the GPU. It has its own memory, it has its own processor, it has its own motherboard. It's a whole other computer sitting inside a computer, and it's made for just crunch and numbers. Generally, those numbers equal explosions and first-person view gunfights. But in this case, we're going to have them equal footage and footage effects and green screen keys and size translations and animations and all that kind of stuff. A lot of gaming GPUs will have one, two, maybe four gigabytes of memory. You want something with four gigabytes or higher of memory for video editing, if possible. Another thing to talk about is what GPU to get. Right now, we could talk about exactly what GPU to buy, but in one year that will change. But we'll say it anyways. Right now you should probably get a 980. That's what you want to look for if you're getting a nice GPU. You can look into Titans, but if you want a lot of bang for your buck, the 980 is kind of the way to go. There's a very specific reason we have these huge graphics cards in these computers. And that isn't because we like to play Elite Dangerous with like 4X sub sampling or whatever, super sampling. It's because we actually like to watch our 6K footage that we shoot on our reds. So if you're not shooting on the red, if you're not shooting 4K, 5K, 6K footage, you maybe don't have to worry about going so high end. Mm -hmm. Maybe look at the higher end GPUs from a generation or two back like the 780s, for example. Something else to think about for a filmmaking computer is data storage. So you have footage. Footage takes up a lot of space, mm. usually more space than games. We usually clear around 100 gigabytes, 120 gigabytes or so of footage each day that we shoot, frequently more. So if you have a game installed on a solid state drive versus on a regular hard drive, you've seen the speed difference you get when loading that game. Ah! Same thing for film computers. When you're loading up project files at a vast amounts of footage, fast, nice, fat pipe for a hard drive uh, really gets your project open and running quickly. Fat pipes. Now we have solid state drives. We in fact have two solid state. Shall yeah. we have solid state? Two solid state drives raided together in RAID 0 formation. What does that mean? Basically, the computer treats those two drives as one, and you effectively double your data bandwidth. Not too shabby. However, we don't keep any footage on that drive. That drive runs our operating system, it runs our program files, and a lot of our caches that store like image data and that kind of stuff. So that's all real fast in and out of the computer. But the footage that we have is stored on just a regular platter hard drive. And you want them to be decently fast. We're using Western Digital Blacks. But basically at the end of the day, you're looking for a solid state drive or two in a RAID 0 configuration to run your operating system and programs as well as to store your image caches and then you want to have just regular, large hard drives for storing your footage and have a second one for backup for that footage. But I feel like we should talk about wire management for a moment here. Because I was talking about heat and all this kind of stuff. And one of the best ways you can get your computer to run cool is to not have a big nest of wires sitting inside your computer. So come here, take a, yeah. look. Take a look at what professional cable management looks like. This is, this is origin handiwork at work here. They have all the cables bundled up going back into these holes here. See, there you go. They're all organized on the other side here, just uh, out of your view. Without cluttering up the space. This is known as cable management, and this is something you can do yourself if you're building your own computer. Not to mention having great cable management 
inside your computer allows you to be a little bit more relaxed when it comes to the cables outside your computer. <laughs> point, point taken right there, boom. Let's talk about the MOBO. MOBO? The motherboard. Mo oh. <laughs> a gaming PC may not have the most robust motherboard. For a gaming PC, you just need something that can kind of hold the GPU and the CPU and have a couple USB ports and you're good. But for a video editing PC, it's not quite the case. Generally when doing video editing, you're doing a lot of unique specialized tasks. That's where just generally buying a higher end motherboard will make all those little components run a little bit faster, a little bit smoother, and a little bit more reliably because you also end up generating a lot of heat in a high end computer. Not to mention a good motherboard has a ton ton of ports. If you're going to take a peek at the backs of any of the computers in here, you notice that there are dozens of things coming in and out of them, and that's absolutely necessary for a good video editing rig. Here's the things to look for in a filmmaking computer motherboard. You want lots of ports, USB 3.0 ports, really solid USB buses, eSATA ports, and potentially maybe a Firewire port if you have to deal with older camera tech. And it's not hard for somebody to put out a $150 motherboard and say that it runs a CPU and some memory just fine, and it will. But when things start to be on for 12 hours straight rendering, things will heat up. Things will kind of warp a little bit sometimes because of the heat. So when you pay that little bit of extra money, all the components are just a little bit better, and you're less likely to discover your computer sitting in a little ball of flame. Never happened that. It's yeah, never that, happened. that sounds really funny though. The computer's never I'd love to fire. see that. There you go. Carmichael's computer caught on fire. It happens. Dude, he was editing 12K footage. It was insane. <laughs> um, so that's the biggest difference between a gaming PC and a film editing rig is gaming PCs, it's okay for them to blow up because likely your save file is in the cloud somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> your, your whole video project is not. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that everyone always forgets about when it comes to anything filmmaking related is audio and sound. Everyone forgets to talk about it. Everyone's like, oh my god, look how many Ks I got. They forget that they want some good sound in their dang video too. So, when it comes to audio, on a computer like this, each motherboard usually has a microphone input and an audio output, but realistically, you're going to want to consider getting an external audio interface for a good film editing computer. An external audio interface will allow you to do much more advanced things that a typical computer or motherboard cannot, such as using XLR cables and actual microphones. This is great for when you're doing voiceover or ADR or need to take that super sweet fancy microphone you have on your camera and plug it into your computer instead. I would personally recommend a Focusrite. Sound is pretty important. Next up, let's just briefly touch upon power supplies. You don't need a bajillion watts, but you do enough wattage to cover the computer. Yeah. You basically just need one that has good connections on it, so it has all the right connections for your computer, which, which most of them do these days. You're probably going to want a power supply with about 750 watts. If you're going to run two graphics cards, that's a different story. Yeah, if you're running two graphics cards, you probably uh, don't need much of the information in this video. So last but not least, it would be remiss of me to talk about computers and video editing computers without actually talking about Origin PC. So this is a computer from Origin PC. You can either build your own computer, which is great, highly recommend it so you can learn how to build a computer and what goes inside your machine that you are relying on for your work. But if you don't have the time or want somebody else to do it who's a professional, highly recommend checking out Origin PC. You'll pay a nominal fee for somebody else to put your system together, but they will overclock it for you. They will do all the cable management. Thanks to Origin for hooking us up with a sweet computer. And yep, I highly recommend it if you guys are looking for somebody to build a computer for you.